Welcome to the Spirit of a Badass, where we celebrate stories of courage, hope, and resiliency. I'm your host, Alicia Jacobson. Hello, and welcome to today's episode. I'm super excited. I, I I literally have to stop saying that. I need to come up with a different opening line. I'm always excited. I think because I have such really fabulous guests that I truly, the anticipation that I have when I'm getting ready for these and after I make the ask and they say, yes, I will let you interview me is a real, real thing. And then knowing that you get to be along for this ride, it makes me very, very excited. So I want to share my guest with you today. The reason I asked her is because she has had a very, which I think we all have, this sort of non-traditional path. You do a thing, you get these ideas, you do another thing. And I really want her to share her story today because sometimes, my friends out there, you don't go out and do the thing, that burning thing in your soul because you're afraid of what people might think. You're afraid to fail. You're afraid of what your family might think. You maybe paid a shit ton of money for a degree that you're not using and you want to keep using it because you don't want to go do the thing that you might actually be really happy at because you're like, well, I paid for this. I should really, I should, should really be doing it. But I have my guest here today. She is wildly inspirational and her story is that also. And I have known her for many years, and now you will know her too if you don't already. And I want you to go follow her. She's wonderful on social media. I really just adore her. So you have to go look her up. Today, I have the pleasure of welcoming Kim Schaff, a seasoned entrepreneur with over nine years of experience in home decor, retail, and interior design. Kim is co-owner and principal designer of Linen & Clove, where they specialize in interior design and home decor. She didn't start out here. Kim has over 25 years teaching experience. She left her teaching career to start Linen and Clove with her good friend, Danny. With a passion for learning, Kim continually evolves to pursue her dreams and interests. Welcome, Kim. Thanks for having me. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. First of all, you look fabulous. Is this this a sundress? There's lemons on it. It's a sundress. I love it. It is a sundress. I'm holding on to the last moments of summer for as long yeah, as I can. I, we were talking beforehand. She's wearing a sundress and I have on like a sweater, which if you listen at all, you know that I, whenever I get excited, I start profusely sweating. So the fact that I'm wearing a sweater is, this is just risky business here. I will likely shed some layers if we get into any hot topic that makes me a little bit feisty, <laughs> the sweat will happen. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you now, like, who are you now out in the world? What are you excited about? And then we'll kind of do a let's rewind and see how you got here. Well, currently, I am co owner of Linen and Clove, which is a home decor retail shop and online shop in Verona, Wisconsin. We are also an interior design studio. And so my good friend Danny and I started this journey a little over two years ago, but we'd been talking about it for probably 10 years or more. Our girls knew each other in kindergarten and Through sitting on the sidelines of different sporting events, we learned a lot about each other that we had this dream of opening a shop and opening an interior design studio. And so we've talked about our vision for a very long time. And I had that vision. She had that vision. We decided to do it two and a half years ago. I think we both just were at a point in our lives where we were ready. And here we are. And so very excited about all the things happening in the shop. It's growing fast. And a lot is happening. We have a big move that we're making in January in the design world. And I think everyone will see the shift in the shop, but a lot will be happening behind the scenes. And we're really excited for what's to come. We want to high speed it to January so we can get through the holiday season, but we don't wish time away. I was in my women's coaching circle and one of the ladies was saying like, I'm ready for October. And the idea of not wanting to wish time away yet, I'm so ready for this next step. And how do you really kind of rein that back and stay today and in the now? 
Mm -hmm. Well, in this time is precious. We're building the business and there's a lot of things that we're learning along the way and a lot of things to celebrate that we often forget to celebrate because we're moving so fast. Yeah. Tell me about that because that is something that people don't think of. How do you even remember to do that? Like, what's that like? Well, we don't do it as often as we should. So whether it's hitting uh, goals, numbers that we've set for ourselves, whether it's stopping and looking at our statistical information, the number of online orders, the number of clients that are interested in our services, whether it's dollar amounts, things like that, we try to look at those periodically. And oftentimes it's just like a oh my gosh, like, because we didn't realize because it was going so fast and taking that moment to stop and realize that, you know, oh, we won Best of Madison last year. Oh, we're hitting our goal of the revenue that we were hoping for for the year. Like just all these little things and we don't realize it often. So oftentimes it's a, wow, nice job. <laughs> then we move on. You have a bunch of children also and it's kind of the same where it's like, we're so busy in the weeds of parenting. I know yours has shifted to, they have all, they're all out of the nest now, but you're so busy in the thick of it that it's kind of tricky to be present and be appreciative of what's happening right now. That makes me think of like, when you're talking about business, that might be, I meet with a, a group of women, we meet monthly. And that might be something to add to something like that. Like, let's look back and celebrate, which we kind of do. It's not in a formal way, but looking back and seeing like, oh, let's really sit in this. And what did we do? Like, we did this because, I mean, you haven't been at this very mm -hmm. long. When you look at the scope of businesses and retail, all the things that can happen, like you are doing exceptionally well and really celebrating that often. I'm going to push you to celebrate it more often since we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, we hope to. And, you know, Danny's a driving force in Linen and Clove. I think both of us are ambitious. Both of us care very deeply about this. And most importantly, we care very much about the people that we come in contact with. We're both caregivers in a lot of ways in that it matters to us that people feel good in our space. It matters to us that people feel good about the work that we're doing. It matters to us that people feel good in their homes. And I think, yes, you know, hitting all the other marks is important too, but that's really what our work is. It's about the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that shows, I mean, you can feel it as soon as you walk in your shop or even, you know, I said, go find them on social media. You feel that in your social media, that you have this driving inner force of we are here for the people that we serve, that we really, I think you have the, did you have something up that says live beautifully? Is that in your shop now? Did I see that? Yeah. Like you actually live that and you want other people to live that beyond the actual, the things you want them to actually have that internally. And that absolutely shows throughout your shop in the way that you work with people. That's right. I think that one of the big things that was when we were trying to come up with how to express that live beautifully and what that meant to us, it goes beyond the home and all the pictures and all the stuff. I mean, that's piece of it. But what we really mean by that is being true to who you are, giving yourself space to take in the important things in your life, taking time to explore what those important things are so that you have, in the end, created a life that is beautiful to you. And to each of us, that's something different. And it's up to you to define what that means. And we're not here to define it for someone, but we're here to encourage you to give yourself space to dream, give yourself space for friendships, give yourself space for family, whatever it is that's important to you, learning or exploring or whatever it is, you, you know something's beautiful when it doesn't 
I don't want to say it doesn't exhaust you because it can exhaust you, but when it brings you energy, when it fuels you, when it makes you feel like, okay, that was a really great time or that was really meant a lot to me. And so it's taking that time to really giving yourself the space to explore that. The space. And that's something most people don't do. They Mm -hmm. rush through things. We are taught to go, 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 produce, produce, produce. And what you're essentially saying is our mission, our motto is we want people to create space internally and also externally. And you are providing them with a space to do that. And that's my whole purpose here in the world is to offer and hold space on this podcast and coaching for people to figure these things out. But we first have to give ourselves permission to actually think we deserve this space, Mm -hmm. that it's okay that we're not producing and doing something all the time. Because when you allow yourself to get into that dreamy, creative space, Mm -hmm. it, it changes you. It changes what outcomes you have access to because you're not doing that sort of just grinding. You're letting yourself, I just talked about this with Carrie from Mineral Street Art Center and her podcast. She's all about arts and creativity and giving that to children and creating that space. And what you do for yourself when you allow yourself to have that space to get creative and think that way, it's just, it's such a gift. And you guys are providing that gift to people to get dreamy about their life and what it means to them to live beautifully. I hope, I sure hope so. You know, being an educator for as long as I had been, that's something that we see children lose over time. And part of it's our system, I think, in that we need to give our children space to be creative, to learn, to fail, to make adjustments, and to move on. If we remember that the way that we learn is through making mistakes and you can't wait until it's perfect. You can't care necessarily what people think. I have people that I hold very close to me and they're a very, very small group of trusted advisors, you know, my husband, my kids, and a few friends that will give me the dead honest answer when I say, I want to do this and I want to try this and they will give me the feedback that I need. And oftentimes I'll keep it to myself that I'm doing something until I can't anymore. And then I need to put it out into the world. And so I think when you're pursuing a dream or giving yourself space to dream, remember that, you know, even the most well-intentioned people can say something that'll make you go, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe they're right. And remember to trust your gut. Remember to trust those people that are most dear and your closest advisors and who you know you can get an honest answer from and move forward. Because learning is making mistakes, adjusting and going on. And I think we forget that that's how we learn. You just got to go forward, take the next best step, and then the next best step, and then the next best step. And I've made many mistakes over the years, and I've learned from many of them. (laughs) But it doesn't stop me from wanting to pursue those things that I want to pursue. Yeah. All right. We're going to, instead of going forward, we're going to take steps backwards. So you take us back to Who were you, you know, 20 years ago, kind of your life in a nutshell, and then your path to being here now and sharing your story with us now? I grew up in Milwaukee. I had three brothers, and my mom was a bit of a creative. She loved to craft. My grandmother loved to craft. She loved to make things. And she would, when we were children, help us kind of create 
an environment. She somehow found the paper that they used to use for billboards. She'd bring those home and we'd paint them and make art sets. My cousin and I were just talking about how we used to play hotel and we'd make the keys and the little boxes to keep all the keys in and we'd hand write the little brochures and we'd have people come in and we'd take them on travel trips and my mom just kind of let all that happen even though it was sometimes messy and and she would encourage us to do all of those things and I think that along with my grandmother who was also very creative kind of formulated that creativity in me and the need to be creative and to continuously learn new and different things. Growing up, I I grew up in a house that had a number of challenges in whether it was mental health or finances and, and those kinds of things. And my mom recognized that as the only girl, that it was important that she knew that I could do anything that I could be anything. And she encouraged me to read and don't settle. Don't, you know, do what you do what you need to do. Like go out there and get it. And she encouraged me to take risks even when I was in high school doing things, whether it was theater or trying singing or trying the junior miss or sports or whatever it was, whatever I wanted to try, she encouraged me to do that. And she encouraged me not to settle. And so when I was looking to start a career, I thought I I loved science, thought I'd go into medicine and really just found a love for kids and the creativity and the create an environment that goes along with that for learning and became a teacher and spent many years as a teacher. And I loved it. I loved the the kids. I loved the people I worked with. I loved learning new things. I loved the curriculum, all of it, until I just in the back of my mind kind of always had this dream of opening a shop and being involved in the interior design world. Like as a child, I didn't, I guess I just didn't even know that was an option or a career or that it was something that seemed like the safe thing to do. I worked really hard to try to create as much safety in my life as I could by going to college, getting the teaching job, doing the things that I was supposed to do. But I always came back to this creative side. And for a long time, I did it in my own home, or I worked with friends and helped them create something or build something or pick out paint colors or furniture, or whatever it was. And it came to a point where it wasn't enough. And I knew that I needed to try it. I mean, when we dream, and we think about those things, they're permanently in our brain, you never lose that it's always there. And it's always this little nagging thing that I wish I would have, I should have. I always thought I was going to. And if you listen carefully to the voices in your head, they'll tell you, they'll point you in the right direction, at least to try and get started. And I think my teaching world really helped prepare me for what I'm doing today in creating an environment where people can come in, teaching others how we do what we do. The back end, I was also a in technology and learning for a long time. So I did a lot of public speaking and getting on camera and recording training videos and making graphics and editing video and all of those things that I was doing for education now totally apply. And I have a long list of dreams and oftentimes would just take a couple steps towards it, like getting my real estate license. My dad and I used to love to go look at houses and I'm like, someday I'm going to get my real estate license. The job is not for me, but I have my license (laughs) and it means something to me. And I think I bring with my design a sense of, you know, how you improve and the value of your home. And I think that it has all those little things have led me to where I am today. And I'm excited for where it's going. I know I'm not done. And I look forward to the future. But here we are. I can't believe I opened it. (laughs) I can't believe I did it. 
Yeah. Well, you there were a lot of little things. Can you go into them? Because when we were talking before, I was sharing how I, I really want those listening today to know that success is not linear. I mean, you see these graphics, which they are powerful. When you see these graphics, it's like the messy squiggly circle. It's not one point to another point. There's all of these different things that we've done and you have done a lot of them. I know you had like some pop-ups, you did things in your home. Can you kind of go into what they are and then also in to the mindset that you have? Because the mindset and your perception of what you have done is really important and one of the keys to you, your success because another person could look at that and think, well, I tried this and it didn't, quote unquote, work in the way that they thought. But you're thinking, and this is how I think too, I mean, my path to where I'm at now is like wild, but my thought is it all brought me here. All of the things, all of the places that I learned or worked, they all brought me and gave me the exact knowledge that I need to be exactly where I am. And I'm so grateful for them, but not everyone has that. So just go a little bit deeper in there. And it comes back to that whole learning thing. Like learning, making mistakes and moving on. And I've had my share of those. So, you know, one of the things as my kids started to get older, I always had this interest in the home decor design world. And it started out with furniture. I would find furniture on Craigslist I'd, or on rummage sales or on the side of the road and I'd bring it home and I'd refinish it. And then I'd sell it on Craigslist. And I'm like, wow, okay, like this is interesting. I can make money doing this. But I did that for a little while. And that one-to-one, like going through the work of finding it, painting it, moving on, it's like this could lead to burnout really fast because what happens it what is, you know, people hear you're doing this. Can you help me refinish that? Take a look at this old dresser I have. Could you do that? And it's like, okay, wow, I'm still working full time. I have kids, got to do something a little different. So I took some time off and kind of pursued some things on my own. And that's when I decided I really, I really need to give this a try. I have some space of time because the kids are getting older. I had some time in the summer that I could do things and I opened three painted birds. And so three painted birds was my kind of passion project, I guess, like trying to dabble in the space. And I did pop-ups. I'd go to events, whether it was here in Verona or Wanakee or down in Illinois, or I'd bring my tent and all of the things that I made and we'd go and sell them. And I loved it. I loved the process of it. So continued to grow with that and was at a point where People were asking for more. And so I had the opportunity to move into a garage of a shop and was in the garage. And some of your listeners might remember the Purple Goose when it was in a home in Verona. And I was in the garage and had a shop set up there with kind of some crazy hours that, you know, worked for me and my family. And it would be freezing cold out there. And there I would be pursuing that. And I wanted more and tried to build a website and tried to go online, tried to start to teach things online through Facebook Live at that time. And it got to be a lot where Things were happening, but I wasn't at a a point where I could walk away from my job and make that flip. And it was getting to be too much. So I thought, well, what if I just took the online piece and tried to pursue that? And so started trying the idea of doing some classes online, creating a membership with some crafting kinds of things where people would create different things for their home, DIY kind of projects. And Again, it just got to be where I'm like, this isn't quite it. I can't do this and a full-time job and being a mom through a lot of hard conversations with trusted people decided to just stop and walk away. Will you, when you say this wasn't quite it, because you have a 
incredible ability to really go within. And I think it goes back, part of it at least, to you giving yourself that space. If we're so busy, we don't even, those, when you said, listen to the voices in your head and kind of the the going within, we don't Mm -hmm. allow time for that. We just head down and we're grinding. What was that experience like? Because people are feeling exactly what you're saying. They might be unaware of it because they're going, going, going. So one, they might just be going too fast and be unaware of it, or they might really not have the skills yet of tuning in and slowing down a little bit and really getting that clarity. So can you just Mm -hmm. paint us a picture of that? I journal a lot. I love to write things down. And so not only do I write down my dreams or goals that I have, I also reflect a lot. It's kind of my space to be honest with myself. And sometimes that honesty with myself is hard to share with other people because I'll look like I failed. I'll look like, oh, she's doing that now. Oh, no, she's over there now. Now she's, oh, that didn't work out. That was, you know, and I worry about what people think. And so by journaling and writing down what I'm feeling, what went well, what didn't, every day I go and I read my list of goals of things I want to do before I die. (laughs) And some of them have nothing to do with business or any of that, but many of them are that kind of growth that I've always been passionate about. And so it's getting over what other people think and really listening to myself and my gut and what I need and where I want to go. And for me, that's always been journaling. And then second would be then sharing that with people that I trust, whether that's a a coach, whether that's a therapist, whether that's, you know, my inner circle of friends, my husband, my adult children, it's trusting in them. Am I on the right path? I'm feeling like this isn't quite right. I'm feeling a tug towards something different. And it's important, I think, when you're journaling to go back and read, because sometimes fear also will keep you from going forward in the way that you're supposed to go. And so you know, that is a lot of, I think, what I'm experiencing with Linen and Clove even right now is this fear of not being enough, not knowing what I'm doing is right, worrying about what people think, and all of those things. And so it's from journaling with myself, with how things went, what my goals are, what my thoughts are, because I'll see patterns in those thoughts as I write them down. And it's important that you realize that learning is about trying and sometimes making mistakes in the path that you're going. And so for me, I ended up just walking away from all of it. It was too much. I was going without sleep and I still loved my day job and it was safe. And I needed, I think, to grow more in a lot of personal ways. I think I needed to get to a point where my kids were good, you know, like they were okay. And, and they're all just thriving and doing their own thing right now and couldn't be more proud of them. And then having a partner in crime has made such a huge difference. We are able to bounce things off each other and share our concerns about how things went. We're good at keeping check with each other because it just was kind of crazy the way this happened. And, you know, years of talking about the dream and then 
my business partner also had started a little passion project with Olive and Viv, and she kind of went down that same road of doing pop-ups. And I remember uh, going out we were over at her house and we were talking, okay, how can we do this? Should we get a bus? Should we get a trailer? What can we do? Can we have a space that we just open when we want it open, when we can? We were going through all of these options together. And eventually after COVID, I think we both just reached a point in our career where we were like, we're done, enough's enough. And if we don't do this now, when? And we both had kids that were graduating and now both of us are empty nesters this year. So we're able to give it our all and put the love into it and attention that it needs. And I think, I, I think there couldn't have been a better time. And I think both of our experiences from 25 years of being in careers, we bring to that to Linen and Clove. We have a fair amount of wisdom in what we're doing. And we can't always say we know exactly what we're doing, but we're willing to learn, we're willing to try and go forward. I I see it as kind of a dance between we're moving forward, we're going in the direction of our dreams in the direction of the scary, the unknown, the this is where our pull is. And this, what will people think? What will people think of the path? What will people think when I come out with this? Because that, I would say one of the the main barriers that I hear from women is that I worry about what people will think and that it can be a hard stop. Tell us about that dance. So it's not something that I can say I'm completely freed of. I go through phases where I can honestly say it doesn't matter. I'm okay with putting myself out there and not really caring what people think. But there are many times when I care very much about what people think and I overanalyze what people think. And for me, at the end of the day, I want the dream more than what I care about what people think. It matters too much to me to care what people think and to take the time for what people think. I don't remember who said this, but it's none of my business what people think. And sometimes when I do catch wind of something or I do overhear a conversation, sometimes even within your own circle or family, I just got to remind myself that If you're not in the arena doing the hard work, I'm going to Brene Brown this, stay away. Like you have no idea what I'm going through, what I'm doing, the hard work that this takes and how every day I'm trying to be a better version of myself and that'll never be perfect. And so there'll be lots of reasons for you to judge or to think things. And it's none of my business. And I don't care because I just can't. I just can't. Yeah. Because it will cripple you. Yeah. A little bit of that sounds like blinders. It's not my business. So if I hear it, if it comes my way, if the wind is blowing Mm -hmm. and I'm getting these whispers of whatever it is that is not like, yeah, yes, go. It's like focus. So you're redirecting yourself. Blinders on. I love that you said the dream. I want the dream more than I care about what people think. That's huge. It is. My why is more important than what people think. Does it still affect me? Absolutely. I don't don't want to come on here and pretend that the words that people say don't matter, that when I'm on social, sometimes in the back of my mind, all these things, all these voices, all these concerns come up. And I don't want to pretend that it's perfect. But I've come a very long way in my life. And I think if people realized my family's story and my story, I think the fact that I am here, standing, college educated, loving marriage, beautiful children who are succeeding, pursuing my dream with a good friend and a brilliant partner. 
I think that would surprise a lot of people. I lost my mom almost two years ago. And one of our last conversations that we had, she had towards the end, she had to have known she was dying. We didn't know. We were having these really bizarre conversations where she'd call and she'd be afraid. And one of the last conversations I had with her before she went into the hospital was, Kim, I'm just so afraid. And I'm like, what are you afraid of? She's like, well, haven't you been afraid? I'm like, I'm afraid all the time, mom, but I don't understand like what you're talking about. And she's like, I still have dreams. I still have things I want to do. And I'm afraid. And I just, now looking back at that conversation, it has a whole new meaning to me. She never pursued her dreams, partly because she wasn't allowed to in a really destructive marriage. And then after that marriage ended, it was she had just been beaten down so far that being able to pick herself up and pursue a dream was so big of an ask, more than she probably could have handled. And so when I think about quitting, when I think about listening to other people and what they think, I don't want to look back on my life and say, I wish I would have, I should have. I don't want to die and be laid out with all the things that I could have done or should have done. I want to I want to live my life and what that means to me. And it changes and it evolves, but I keep a running numbered list of all the things that I want in life. And it varies from owning a Vitamixer to, you know, going on vacations with my children and, and just having these world experiences. And so I just keep this running list. And we had this conversation at our spring event about pursuing dreams. And I had written down on my list a recurring daydream that I had. And it made no sense at the time, but it was that I would own a store, I would be doing the interior design, and I'd be hosting events for women. I want to raise women up. And I had this vision of this place on Monroe Street, where it was two stories, And I was doing this event and speaking and introducing people on a set of stairs. And that night when Danny and I opened the shop, her and I stood at the top of the stairs and cut the ribbon with the Chamber of Commerce. And I look at that picture now and, oh my gosh, like the universe just has a way of speaking to you. And in that appointed time, what you write down, wait for it, it'll come. And it did. And so now I have kind of a new appreciation of the things I write down. And those pictures that I have in my head, those dreams I have in my head, they may not look exactly what I thought they would, but sometimes they do. And sometimes I know now looking back, so many of those things prepared me for where I am now. Because had I not tried three painted birds, I'm not sure I would have been able to do this. I met a lot of people along the way with three painted birds like you, we'd sit on the pool side and talk, whether it was other people in business who I could learn something different from all of those experiences got me here. And so getting to the end of my life satisfied with what I've learned, making sure that the people around me knew that I cared and loved them and would do the things that they needed, that I made people feel better and left the world a little better. That's more important to me than what people think because it doesn't matter at the end of the day. It really doesn't. I'm the one that's going to be on my deathbed talking to maybe my children saying, I wish I would have. No, Mm -mm. it's not worth it. Yeah. And I mean, look at all of the lives that you just said, all of the people you met along the way. I think when people are 
considering these things, they're thinking about kind of the world looking at them. Mm -hmm. But a piece of what they miss is what gifts do you have that you are depriving people of? I truly think like if you wouldn't have done this, people would be deprived of your shop. The the gifts that you give, it's way beyond. I mean, it is, yes, it is a brick and mortar. It is so much more. You've already heard how much more it is. I guarantee you, you just being here, somebody listening, their life is going to be different because they they heard what you said saying, I cared more about my dreams, about the story of your mom. And that will be, that will shift them. Mm-hmm. And when you withhold yourself from your dreams, you withhold people from experiencing your gifts. And that's, I, I'm hearing all of that when you're talking. You are unafraid, afraid or whatever mm-hmm. to go after and get it. And then you are giving people, just blazing this whole ass trail for people to do the exact same thing. That's why I've been talking about this for a while, wanting to interview you because you have such a beautiful story. And I don't know all of your story, but I know enough about you to know that there's a very deep space in your story Mm -hmm. that brought you into this beautiful space that you're in. Like that is just, it's so wonderful to see what you're doing. I love walking in the shop. I was there this past weekend and my other friend was in there and I'm introducing you and Mm -hmm. I, I have this, it's pride. I am so proud to have watched you I don't know how long we've known each other long enough over the past, say, 10 years and all of the things that you have tried on and learned from and your continual pursuit of your dream. And that's just such an inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I think there just needs to be more of that. And I, I am so thankful to have you here and sharing your story. There's no doubt in my mind that people will hear this and be like, you know what? I'm going to go fucking do it now. I'm going to do it. Like, yeah, I'm going to do yeah. it. It's going to be scary, but they're going to reflect on the words that you said of, I care more about my dreams than what other people think. Because at the end of the day, I mean, you said it more lovely than I say it, but we're all going to die. Mm-hmm. Like, the, this is, the, that is the, the fate of all of us. Yes. And the more that we can live in the way that lights us up, we just light up everybody else. Mm-hmm. And we need more joy in this world. We need more beautiful joy we in sure this world. Do. It's just the way it is. Yep. So if you have it inside you and you are listening, go shine that shit all over. Like share it because it's, if you're keeping it to yourself and if you're not ready yet, I get that. But if you've been having this for years and you've been just too afraid, reach out to somebody, create your inner circle. Mm-hmm therapist, coach, your people, harness them and get them fired up behind you. Because they will cheer you on. Those people that know you will cheer you on. I have the best cheerleaders Mm -hmm. and I'm very thankful for that. And it doesn't mean it'll be easy. And it doesn't mean you need to have the entire dream. I mean, opening the store and the interior design studio, like that didn't happen overnight. It took a lot of learning before that. And a lot of it was quiet learning, you know, little things. I would read books and listen to podcasts and all of those things. It's so easy to take the first step. And the first step doesn't need to be the big thing. The first step could be learning a piece of it, learning how to communicate better, learning how to do video editing, learning how social media works, but don't get caught in those weeds either of constantly learning, taking that step and just really trust yourself, write it down, write every day and ignore all the other stuff because there's a lot of unnecessary hate in the world, but there's also a lot, a lot of goodness and a lot of reason to take the chance. The people that we've met along the way, the relationships that I have that I'm so thankful for now, had I not done those things, they would have never happened. I think it's important for you, for anyone to really Take the time to think about what your heart's desires and to take the time 
even if it's five minutes. And I know, I mean, both of us have crazy kid lives for a very long time. And any time that you can take to reflect and think about what is on your heart and to just take tiny steps to do that, that's learning. Like, figure it out as you go. None of us know what we're doing. Do we have plans? Absolutely. But even the best laid out plans don't always go the way you think they're going to go. And that's okay. That's what learning is all about. And this is all learning (laughs) as we're going along. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to take it slow, but then don't hold back. Oh, I like that. Don't hold back. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm actually meeting with somebody. I have a two hour blank space that I'm meeting with somebody because I'm in this sort of like, what direction do I want to go? What do I want to do? Like it is very exploratory. And I know that I can't, I can't do this on my own. So I'm like, okay, who can I connect with that can support me in this? Because whatever the outcome is, it's going to be a big deal and it's important. But I'm also like, I have to create the space, dedicated space to exploring whatever it is. I don't know what it is yet. No clue. <laughs> but I gathered, I gathered the the troops on this one. I'm going to take that space. So anything you want to share about the shop happenings, exciting things? Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of events coming up with the end of the year. Our collection launches are always huge, big events that we celebrate and just the change of the seasons. So November 2nd is our next home decor holiday launch. And then that Friday after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, we will be launching our our gifts. We have a number of guests that will be coming in, entrepreneurs that we just feel this obligation to pay it forward and support those people that where we were 10 years ago asking people, can we come and do a pop-up? And it's like, absolutely. We love to have people come in. So we'll be having a number of those, but you can follow us on Instagram at Linen and Clove. We're on Facebook and TikTok. And we have a website where you can shop all the home decor goodness. We are going to be do I say this? Like we're redesigning the design sort of, of taking it to the next level. And that is a work in progress. And we are going to be launching it in January. So you're going to see another big transformation in the store. And we're really excited about that as well. And so if you're interested in design services, all of it's on our website. Awesome. All right. I think I've always loved your social media, (laughs) but yeah, go find them on social media, Linen and Clove. And I'll, when we do it, I'll tag you, but everything is also in the show notes, the website and everything like that, where you can find more information out. Thank you so much, Kim, for being here. Thank you for making a space for this and allowing us into your world and your path. Cause I think not many people talk about this path and what it takes to get here and how to get here. So thank you. Well, thank you for always being there and cheering us on. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. I love everything about what you're doing. (laughs) Thank you so much. All right, Kim. Thank you. Take care. Spirit of a Badass is a Lit Path Studios podcast and is produced by Jamie Gale and Alicia Jacobson. Music by Shane Ivers. We'll be back with another inspiring interview. Until then, keep your spirits high and your energy badass. Badass.